Focus on Excellence, highlighting local and national leaders who found the secrets of success and reached the top of their profession. Thank you very much for joining us for Focus on Excellence. My guest today is the famous Colonel Oscar Poo, who is a great friend of mine and a person who's become world famous. Started his barbecue about 15 years ago and now he's been on national television, world television, CNN, Fox News, C-SPAN, you name it, Oscar's been on them all. Oscar, as a little boy, did you ever dream that you would be such a huge success? Well, I had big dreams, but I didn't know they would be fulfilled. In fact, they aren't all fulfilled yet. But I did have some big dreams and uh, started out as a newspaper boy. My first business, I made $7 the first week and I saw all those piled up there, those dollar bills. I was 12 years, you mean <laughs> that's my money? And so I was in business for myself when I was 12 years of age. Well, now Oscar, um, what does success mean to you? I've seen you, you started that barbecue with almost no capital today. It's a, a million, multi-million dollar business. What an incredible success story. And it's got to encourage everybody, these young people out here, to see you start from nothing and become uh, super well, successful. You know, what does it mean to you? You know, all this started at age 59. I know. That's what's so amazing. I was successful in the pastorate. I was a minister, a United Methodist minister. And you started your business, though, with almost no capital. Well, I was in the hole. You were in the hole. We were $3,500 in the hole. We had to borrow money to pay the, the first week's groceries. Isn't, isn't that something? True. Now, when did you realize that you were going to make it? Uh, after the media started coming, uh, now success, you ask, you ask what success means to me? Yeah. Success means, I believe, the achievement of your goals. Yeah. If you have no goal, you'll, you'll achieve that. Yeah. Having no goal is a goal. And if you're a failure and you had no goal, you're successful in, in achieving no goal. <laughs> that makes sense? That's amazing. Well, you asked me about the success. But your last question there. Okay. The question was, what does success mean to you? I mean, you become, uh, I'd say, a household word in America. You've been on CNN, Fox, all the news channel, every newspaper. You know, we went out to California together. I picked up the paper the next morning. There was my friend Colonel Poole on the front page of the Los Angeles Times. Well, I was surprised about that. I mean, that was amazing. Most of this has come as a surprise. Even though, as I said earlier, I had big dreams as a young boy. I had uh, the, I was the only guy who had a car in high school, and I made 50 bucks a week in my paper route in the 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, paid my way through college, got married halfway through, and paid all the expenses, you know, with, with delivering papers. Yeah. Big paper route. Well, now, I consider you a Martin. That suit, which I call, and by the way, Colonel Poo has written several books. I just read his last book, uh, uh, God in the Marketplace. And in that book, you mentioned the fact that uh, I call your suit a million-dollar suit. I would actually say there's, there's the book, uh, yes. God in the Marketplace, written by Oscar. That was, uh, how many books you written now? Two. Two books. That's the second. And in that book, you, the, the million dollar, there's the first book, speak to it. And I say that's a million dollar suit. I may have to start calling it a $10 million suit. Well. What's the, what does that yellow suit mean to you? I mean, people walk into the restaurant or they see you on television all over the world. They laugh. They get excited. What does that do to you? Uh, like makes Superman me, putting on his suit? <laughs> makes me very humble. Uh, you can't wear this suit if you're proud because it would, people would you'd turn folks off. Uh, this suit is my image suit. As Colonel Sanders, I, I was called the Colonel Sanders of barbecue, and he had an image, a white suit. Well, I couldn't wear that. So I just decided to wear the yellow suit. I could wear that. And the first time I had it on was at a state convention down in Macon, Georgia, and I was ashamed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> of course, when you go to the bathroom, you walk down there with about two, 3,000 folks there, everybody watches you, and you can feel it. But when did you get past that to where the you... That night. Okay. About uh, seven or eight hours later, people, so many folks like, I love that suit, and I like that hat. And uh, I got about 20 compliments that night. And then I got, when well, I saw how it was received. And to this day, I would say only about a half of 1% have been turned off by it. Well, I think it's, I think your success story, Oscar, to start with virtually no capital and make it big. That's the American dream come true. And I know that you, you and I have talked a lot. What you want to do is energize and motivate and inspire other Americans. If, if you could do it at 59 years old, virtually bankrupt, what you're saying to other Americans like these young people here, Hans and the people watching you, that boy, they can do it if they work uh, yes. hard and they have a dream. If I can do it, they can do it. You, anybody can do it. I think success is universal. It's generic. Anyone can if he thinks he can and if he wants to. Well, now, in your book, uh, 
in that book there, God in the Marketplace, you have in the back of it how to be successful. Yeah. And it came from an interview I did with you several years ago. Yes, sir. And you list in there, and I would recommend everybody buy this great, both those books. They, they really inspire you. They tell you how to be successful. And you give some of the things, like, like you and I have discussed, being with people that love what you do. You've got to have a passion, right, for what yes. you do. You have a passion. And then hang around the top. And hang around. You know, Steve Spurrier said that. They aren't all my per I don't own these secrets. They're just... Uh, but you hang around successful people, right? Yeah. And hang around people that believe in you, right? It, it's contagious. Cheerleaders. Look at the... Well, here's the cheerleader. <laughs> I have in here, everyone needs a Joe McCutcheon in his life. And your uh, lady said to me one time, Oscar Poole, you're a good G, uh, marketing person, but it, it, having Joe Kelly McCutcheon as your friend hadn't hurt. Well, but you, but you had the ability to market yourself, the suit... The, and then you, the Oscar, you've had the Pigs on the Hill, the Pig Mobile, uh, the Taj Mahal. Give us a little rundown on some of those things that have made you world famous. The well, Pigs on the Hill, just you know, start with that. At the first, people laughed at us. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I laughed back. I laughed with them. <laughs> <laughs> they laughed at me, but I laughed with them because I had something up my sleeve. I had some gold. I knew what I was doing. And I said, what we, we want to do for the pig what Walter did for the mouse. You heard of Walter? Yes, Walt, Walt Disney. Disney. Yeah. And, and think about that. Yeah. When you put things like that in perspective, I was called silly. In fact, one man called me crazy. And uh, I, I guess but, that's true. But you true. laughed all the way to the bank, didn't yes, you? Yes, yes. And it grew. <laughs> but after the man came from the Swedish embassy, the cultural counselor, he said, this is the most Americana thing I've ever seen across America. And he says, this place is so tacky, it's classic. <laughs> I said, would you write that to the Chamber of Commerce? Which he did. And that is a document I have on, in my barbecue right now. That, it's so tacky, it's classic. I love it, being well, tacky. The, the books, Oscar, they're great books. I've read them both. You just gave me your newest book yesterday, which is not quite ready for sale. You gave me an advanced copy. But why did you write those two books? For posterity. Number one reason I wanted it for posterity. My family and friends, you know, I'm 74 years of age. You're not. You're going to live to 100. Well, 124. 124, good. And that's 19, uh, not 19, 2005, four. But in case something happens, I want to leave something behind. What did I do? I've got some CDs out. I play on the piano. You know, I do yeah. some of that. Yeah. But uh, that's what, mainly I did it for that reason. But also, as you said earlier, I want to encourage others. If I can do it, they can do it. Okay, Colonel, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to the famous Colonel Poole about how he has been successful. And I think all the people that listen to this program can pick up some real success secrets listening to the famous Colonel Poo. Thank you for joining us for Focus on Excellence. That's great. Focus on Excellence will return in just a moment. We're back with Focus on Excellence. Thank you very much for joining us for Focus on Excellence. My guest today is the most inspiring, outstanding Colonel Oscar Poole, who's became, uh, become a household word in America. Uh, with his famous barbecue and his million-dollar suit, and here he is today as my guest, and it's an honor to have you, Oscar. This thing started big Thank with you. Pat Buchanan. Tell us about it. That was February of 1992. I had been to New Hampshire to campaign for him, in and out over that snow up there, snow about that deep and about 14 degrees, I was cold. But I knew he was coming back down, so I went up there two weeks to get acquainted with him. During that time, the Secret Service came by, inspected our kitchen and the bath, the storage room, which had a bathroom in it, and uh, what rooms we had there, the 10 foot by 10 foot was added on you know, with a chicken, yeah. chicken house roof, and here we were at Secret Service. I was in New Hampshire. Well, when we got there, here was Pat Buchanan, his wife, Shelley, and he had his first campaign in the South, uh, first rally, kicked off the entire Southern Crusade, and of course, the Georgia Crusade. He had, as I remember, 37 or 38 percent of the vote yeah. In New Hampshire. Against Bush. Yeah. And he was riding high. Bush won. Bush won, one. yeah. Riding high in Georgia. And the, as you know, they called Georgia the New Hampshire, uh, New Hampshire of the South. And he carried Gilmer County. Yes, he did. He beat Bush in Be Gilmer County. Twice. Yeah. Twice. That's in 92 right. and 90. That's I, right. 92 and 96. I believe that's right. Yeah. Uh, so here he was. And I call that our day of infamy. Like the FDR said. Because all the press was here. CNN, all uh, you, uh, the uh, yeah. San Francisco Chronicle. Reuters. Uh, CNBC, well, Japanese television, MTV, MTV caught me on. I was riding the pig mobile, the, the pig car, and <laughs> I, I saw it myself, or I wouldn't have believed it. Yeah. Uh, CNBC, CBS, ABC. This sounds like somebody making a story up. 
And that's why I have a hard time believing it myself, even today. When Please. I look, reflect back on this, it's a, I just, it's a wonder. Oscar, it's an incredible story. Now, look, you brought some pictures with you, yes. sort of telling about your success, Republican yes. Convention, other pictures. Be sure to hold them out away from your microphone so you don't cut your you voice might, off. You might recall this one. Okay, that's, that's... Uh, uh, this is the earliest shack. Okay, that's, his, that's the Oscar Poole shack when he first got it started yeah. before he got his... There's a pig mobile. Uh, there's the pig mobile. And uh, that's the door that don't, Pat, don't cover you, don't that cover your Pat and Shelley came out okay. and with the San Francisco Chronicle uh, front page article. Okay. Uh, would you hand me right over there by okay. you? Okay, yeah, let's uh, see. Right here? Yeah, I'm very proud of that one. Okay. Here is, I haven't made much to do about it. I am leading the Olympics. Okay. Into Georgia. Okay. Back in, was that 96? 96, okay. There I am with all the flags and everything. Leading the Olympics into Georgia. Okay. Uh, let's see. Show us some of your convention. This, Oscar was a, went to the Republican convention as a guest, and there this, you are. Here's the most. Don't get up and get your microphone. The I'll most famous out. picture was myself and David Barbie from Augusta, Georgia. No, no, I got it wrong. That's me over there and him over here. Yeah. And that made Associated Press all over the world. Here's Ed and me on the floor. And we made it all over the world, too, on the That's incredible. New York Times wire from service. Pharrell, from East LJ, Georgia. Yeah. Colonel Oscar Pooh. And now, then, here are the, here are the uh, that's the Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, with Oscar and Edna. And uh, he's the most, he's the Speaker of the House, the most powerful man in the House of Representatives. And then there's Senator Dr. Bill Frist, who is the Senate Majority Leader, the two most powerful people in the Congress with Colonel Pooh. How did it feel, Oscar, to be pictured with the two most powerful people in the Congress? Well... I, I relate that. I met, uh, you know, uh, Bush Sr. and Barbara on CNN Live. That's right. And you were on that. was all over the world. On Monday evening. And, yes, all, that's all over the world. Okay. And it was live t television. Okay. Of course, this is all t TV also. Yeah, that's uh, but terrific. It and it was live, too. Well, I'll ask you a question I've got. If you got any more pictures, is that it? No, I got some more. Oh, you got some more. Of course, Go Johnny, you know about that's Johnny. That's Johnny Eisen, who's, ladies and gentlemen, who will probably be the next senator, a powerful congressman. And... Uh, that's uh, Carolyn Meadows who got you invited, right? Yeah, she, she was, was RNC lady. RNC, and here is uh, Cindy Lamute and, and me at our barbecue. And Cindy's husband, Bar Robert, ran for Congress. Yes, Real right. fine fellow. He's a senator. And here is Edna and me on the floor of the, uh, of the convention. convention. And that was the New York Times news service. But that's Anchorage, Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska. Oscar and Edna, the front page of the New York Times. Okay. This is not the convention. This is uh, Bill Goldberg. This is Bill Goldberg, the famous All-American at University of Georgia football player. And now he's a world-famous wrestler. And the, he came to Pooh's Barbecue, and, and you, uh, you were going to take him on. Now, here's your... Here's your uh, I'm very proud of this. This is a print. Okay. The original painting is 44 by 66, oil painting. It hung in the OK Art Gallery in New York City for three or four years, I think. And now it's owned by the Morris Museum in Augusta, Georgia, where we unveiled this, and I was made the man of the day or, uh, by the mayor of, of Augusta. And that was a great thing. That was right. Well, now, Oscar, let me ask you a question. I think I know the answer to this. Are you having fun? Yes, I am. And that, isn't that, and that goes back to what we talked about. The key to success, and these young people are watching, is to have fun, right? I think part have of my... Have a passion for what you're doing. Yes, part of my reason for having fun is to be silly. Yeah. Almost to the point of being ridiculous. Yeah. Who wants to wear a yellow suit or drive a pig car? Well, I, I do. Well, now, <laughs> what, what do you think, where, where does this go from here? Your goal is to, to inspire and motivate other people to be successful like you've been successful. There are 24 million small businesses. Yes. And you want to help them and, be, become more successful. And you know, we successful. began our business right here, Colonel Poole's Georgia Barbecue, in a recession. Yes. In 1989, we started, and that was in a recession and didn't come out till the last two, three years. Is that right? Am yeah, I? that's right. And uh, we were in a recession. Well, so you think that, that being successful, if you know what you're doing and you have the passion, you can do it. You've got to have a dream. Okay. You must have an idea. Ideas in the mind or the spirit, you've got to bathe it in uh, meditation. Everything I do is spiritual. I've got biblical references for this, and I won't go into all that because I'll get, get to pontificating, which means <laughs> preaching. I won't do that today. <laughs> but you've got to have an idea. You've got to protect it you got to see it what you what the mind can conceive and the heart believe man can achieve i call that my cba philosophy conceive believe achieve if you can conceive it conceive and believe you can achieve so you believe so you believe based on having a positive attitude that's very important you got to rid yourself of all negative 
negative visit. So if you've got friends around you that are telling you you can't succeed, you need to change friends. At, or, just your, or close your ears at one or walk <laughs> off or something. Uh, okay, Oscar. Tell us a little bit about your, your business and personal goals. Now, you've been super successful in business, but we've got about a minute here before the break. Give us a brief rundown on your business and personal goals. And if well, we can't finish, we'll come back. There's not enough time. I've got so many projects, and I'm very goal-oriented. I have a vision. And as the Bible says, don't perish but prosper. <laughs> we believe in all that. Uh, we've got several projects yet, and some I'm holding back on telling what it is because I believe in the power of the secret. Don't tell too much too soon to too many people. That's a very a corn, a cornerstone principle of my success principles. But we do have personal goals, and uh, uh, we're doing well. And Darwin, our son, is, is, is going to be the new manager owner. He's the CEO of Parent. Okay. Apparently he's going to be the... So you're going to travel around doing PR all over the world. Yes, and doing seminars, uh, doing like this. Well, okay. We're going to take a break. We come back, we're going to talk to the famous Colonel Poole about other, other ways and other ideas he has to be successful. And thank you so much for joining us for Focus on Excellence. Focus on Excellence will return in just a moment. We're back with Focus on Excellence. Thank you very much for joining us for Focus on Excellence. It's a real honor to have my dear friend, Colonel Oscar Poole, a huge success story, uh, one of the most inspiring people I've ever had the honor to interview. Uh, Colonel, uh, what a great, uh, what an incredible life that you have had. Uh, Al Franken brought his program. Of course, Al Franken is the liberal talk show host. How did it make you feel for Al Franken, I guess the number one liberal talk show host, to bring his program to Pooh's Barbecue. At first it scared me, and I was not sure I wanted to do it because I had heard that Al, the extreme liberal, he's a Rush Limbaugh on the left, <laughs> and was mean-spirited, and I didn't want any of that in my barbecue. But they called me and said that they had seen me in Southern Living. Southern Living Magazine, And right? John Marcus, his associate, had been around to Kansas City and uh, uh, various uh, Texas and here and there getting, uh, doing barbecue uh, reports. They would have the program in New York City for three hours, noon through three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and they would call in to the, uh, a certain restaurant and they wanted to use us. Well, I almost said no, and it was just before the convention in New York City. I went there, and I, he could tell I was trying to back out. He said, oh, I, 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 want, I want to come there and do this. Well, I, I didn't, wasn't sure I wanted him to do that, but he sent me a CD to the Carl, uh, Rich, Rich Carlton Hotel where I was staying, and I listened to it, and it was seemed interesting Ritz enough. Ritz Carlton's a long way from being poor, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's Oscar right. stays at the Ritz Carlton. Go ahead. Well, that's where we were, uh, <laughs> down in the financial district near Wall Street and all that sort of thing. And uh, I thought, we can handle that. So I pulled a trick on him. I got Al Ganey, professional hawk talk show host, and I got you, your TV ho host, and they didn't know this. <laughs> I, and I got the right-wing chicken. They came down to make fun of us those Southerners who like barbecue and uh, <laughs> uh, conservative, which we are all that, and we don't like different races and so on, which we love everybody. They didn't know us. Yeah. And so I got the chicken on the uh, 16 halves on the left side, clipped the wings off, and uh, Democrats, I get, get along with that. I, I, I call them that, whether they are or not. And the right wings, I left the wings on. Yeah. So we had right wing chicken. And we cooked them on the right side of the pit. And, and they had the Sundance <laughs> TV here, uh, and I had them go out there and film that on the pit. And that's national, Sundance yeah. National Television. And then when it came on live at 12.05, uh, John Marcus had the right-wing chicken right in front of him there, and the whole, all of America was talking about Colonel Poole's Georgia Barbecue, home of the right-wing chicken. <laughs> That was my well, joke. Well, Oscar, that was, a quite a, that was quite an honor. Of course, you know, you're right. I think one thing that I think really helps your success, you love people of all race, creed, and color. You welcome right. everybody to come to your barbecue. You have you champion love for all people. You, I've never seen you show any malice toward well, anybody, Democrat, liberal. Right. You're Ex friendly to everybody. Extreme liberal. I'm, I'm putting him on the left side of the, of the Al Franken's pig, about that big, on the left side, detached from this pig in the middle, and Pat McCann over here, and I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> okay, Oscar. Well, then about a day after you had Al Franken come for national exposure, you had Turner. Turner South. Turner South, which yes. is connected with Turner Television, yes. another nation worldwide. There came up to do a special on you. They which... spent about five hours interviewing me and getting the pig, uh, pictures of the of pictures. 
pictures. Pig pictures. pictures. And the pig cat fence. Yeah. You've seen the pig. Yes, I've seen it. Doc Hopper's so you're saying Doc something. Hopper's pig Doc cat Hopper's fence. Pit, yeah. And so uh, they spent about five hours. And it'll be on the program called uh, Liars and Legends, I think. Okay. Now, why they chose us, I don't know, but they did. But that's national, and that's that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, Oscar, we're sitting here at the at the great studio of ETC oh, with yes. Hans and these fine people here and all these great people that work at ETC3. Don't you think ETC3 is an incredible asset to the whole Georgia, you, not only North Georgia, but the state of Georgia, the whole country? The United States. I've been asking the question, who else has a thing like this? I come in, John and Kathy Harrison, and the entire Harrison family and all the, the staff. Roger Futch, all the yeah, people Roger here. Roger Futch and uh, all of them for this great uh, venture here. At, you know, I was pastor of the, of the, of the uh, Harrison family back in uh, back in the 70s, early At 70s. At the Cardike Church? Yeah, Cardike United Methodist Church. And uh, I knew Albert and, and uh, Mrs. Harrison very well. They were dear friends of mine until they died. In fact, I had a part in his funeral. Well, the Harrison but, family, uh, they're wonderful people. They've created this, oh, yes. this great... Uh, and they have uh, the Harrison Foundation. They and do they so do much help people, help charities. The and so I commend the Harrisons, uh, uh, John and Kathy, and also you, Joe. You are a fixture here. And like that lady said, it doesn't hurt to have a Joe McCushion as your friend. Well, and I appreciate you and I very much. Well, I appreciate you too, Oscar. I'll tell you what, uh, as we come, as we, we're in the final segment here, I want to give you some names. I want you to say what you think about them. Ronald Reagan. One of the greatest. I wish now I'd gone to that uh, wake up there uh, back a few months ago when he died. Uh, I loved Ronald Reagan. I, on the same paragraph, not just same page, same paragraph with him, uh, uh, ideally. Uh, and also with the economy and the overall view, a p positive view of the world. Okay, Oscar, well, my, I, I was having uh, talking to somebody the other day, Mike Williams, who's a good friend of yours, and Mike commented to me, he said, Joe, I think we've just elected the three best commissioners, yes. not only in, in Georgia, but in America. Well, Isn't I'm, it exciting about uh, yes. Ken Bailey, uh, Jerry uh, Ferris, Gary and, and Mark Chastain? Ken and Mark Chastain. I believe we have a threesome here that are going to lead us right on into in the 21st century. But don't you feel good about the oh, future of Gilmer County? Yes, Aren't I you do. excited? I've been telling everybody this. Well, Oscar, you have had an incredible success. Uh, what does music mean to you? I, you get over there and well. you play and, <laughs> and you get everybody energized. You play Happy Birthday. You play Wet. You play all kind of things. Well, what see, does I, it mean to you? I have a theology for music. Music is the language of the universe. Now, uni, one verse. I'm not playing on words now. Uni, one verse. The word universe means, <laughs> means have one music. Uh, symphony. I think that truly is true. The sound is inspirational, soothing, healing, uh, inspirational, in spirit, in spiritational. Now, I'm not playing on words again, but I'm just telling the truth here. I love music. Well, now, Colonel, uh, you've also, you're also Dr. Poole. Tell yes. us about your education. You've got an, this guy <laughs> has an incredible educational background. Tell us about it. Uh, Stetson University, I have an AB from there, I have an MRE from Asbury Seminary, and a BD from Louisville, uh, and then the at MDiv from Louisville and the Doctor of Ministry from Louisville, and I have I was here in this county and used the Gilmer Parish, the, the four churches of, of the of Co uh, Cochran and Cardike and Gates Chapel and Nine Mile as my doctoral project. Well, now also the books which I recommend for everybody speak to it and God in the marketplace. You know that uh, I know your goal is to help other people succeed. There's the two books right there. Yes. So I read them both. They're both very inspiring. We've got about a minute, just got to say that we have about a minute left. Oscar, we, uh, as you and I always have been good friends. We're going to be good friends till we die. But I've told you many times what I think is so exciting about your success is how it will inspire us. Because this man, ladies and gentlemen, was just about broke at 59. And today, he stays in the Ritz-Carlton. He travels all over the world. He's a household word. So what in the main 30 seconds what would you look into the camera there in the hans camera and tell well, people what can they do to succeed we are building a retreat in fannin county on 12 acres of choice uh, land pristine land almost for getting people together to share these ideas i want to travel and share what god has done for us so it can be done for you and uh, if we can do it you can do it colonel Pooh, thank you for that most inspiring interview you're a great american proud of you thank keep you. up the great work you're truly an inspiration thank you so much for joining us for focus on excellence